Hey, how's everybody doing? Coming at you today, do another little cooking show. Uh, today, homemade meatballs. On my last show where I made a nice spitzade, a lot of people uh, chimed in with the uh, meatball recipes, things they do. I'm going to give you my little meatball recipe, okay? Uh, we'll start with uh, the ingredients, right? Take the thing. Uh, we got the meat. Now, I don't use uh, just hamburger. I use hamburger, veal, and pork, a mix, a uh, couple eggs, fresh parsley, breadcrumb, some uh, Pecorino Romano cheese, salt and pepper. Really basic uh, recipe, real basic list of ingredients here. Uh, and then we put them in a frying pan, we brown them, and then later on tonight, we'll put them, uh, put them with uh, ravioli. I bought some ravioli tonight. So we start with the meat. Like I said, we got a mix of um, veal, pork, and hamburger. I've had meatballs where it's just hamburger. They're very dense, dry. They got no soul. Uh, you got to mix some of the other meats. Veal and pork make it a little bit juicy, okay? Um, so I do, uh, where I shop, they actually they call this an Italian mix. Okay, so veal, pork, and hamburger mixed together. I got a little bit over a pound, okay? So in with the ground meat, I put a couple eggs, all right? And uh, we go one, we go two, and two. Sometimes I'll go three if I have a little bit more. Today, in fact, I am. I'm going to use three today because uh, I went a little bit over a pound of meat. And I'm going to put breadcrumbs and other stuff. So I got my little mopine here to wipe off. After I put the eggs, I go with some fresh uh, parsley. I bought this fresh. I chopped it up real nice. And we throw that right in to the mix. And then some grated cheese. Again, I bought with a Pecorino Romano. Um, sometimes I, I've grated this on my own. Um, you know, going for a little bit of speed tonight. So... Tonight I got it already freshly, already ground. So a little bit of cheese. Remember, I don't, uh, I don't have measurements for you. I don't have a half cup. I have a thieves, but I go, I go with what my eye shows me. So a little bit of uh, garlic powder. Okay, I don't put fresh garlic in this. Um, or if you remember from my other show, the garlic in a jar, already cut up. I go with the the garlic powder because again I got some wet ingredients in here already and so too much wet's no good a little bit of salt a little bit of salt nice punch of salt punch and a half a little bit of pepper give it a shake there the black pepper like this put this to the side now some recipes put a little bit of milk I, again, on the internet, I find some some recipes add uh, like a half cup of milk to this beef stock. Once again, beef stock. I use it with a spit side. I use it with my with my meatballs as well, and that gives a little bit more liquid to it. And then breadcrumbs. I buy what is it called cento cento breadcrumbs. I go with the plain. You can get it already seasoned, but I, I got seasoning going on, so. I don't want to overdo this. Again, about a half a cup, you eyeball it. And of course, the breadcrumb and the eggs, they bind the meatball together. All right, then you take your clean hands and uh, and you go to town. There's no other way. I usually start with this just to kind of, you know, get it going and break up the meat a little bit. But eventually, to make a good meatball, you got to get your hands dirty. You got to get your hands in there. So once I give it a preliminary stir, to kind of get things a little bit mashed up, I will. Uh, I'll go to the hand, right? So here we go. You go in, and you just get your hands in there, and you mush it up real nice, right? I got these big hands; they're good for things like this. So you mix it up, mix it up. You want to make sure the eggs and uh, that little bit of uh, beef stock 
get all mixed together real good with the breadcrumbs. And while I'm mixing, I can get a feel for it. You know, if, if while I'm mixing, I'm starting to feel, ah, you know what, it's still a little bit loose, a little bit wet. You know, I'll go to the breadcrumb. And, uh, and you put a little bit more breadcrumb like this. And then you, uh, you know, you make adjustments as you go. You know, this is a science of the heart. You know, cooking is, uh, you got to have, uh, you got to have passion. You got to have soul and you got to have senses. You got to have a feel, smell. And once you do this, I've done this quite a few times now. You know, you get a feel for what works. Using my mom's big Pyrex from the 1970s. I took this, uh, when I moved out, I knew I'd use this. So this is, comes in handy all the time. And now the meatballs have that thickness, that um, that consistency that I like to work with. You know, and again, I keep going for a while. Now here's another little little secret. This is easily my meatloaf recipe. There's no reason why you can't take this and make a loaf instead of a ball. Um, no reason whatsoever. And so sometimes I'll do that as well. Um, or I'll, of course, you know, I'll just make the meatloaf. Meatloaf if I'm going to do that. And once you get it nice and nice and mixed up like this, usually I like I'd like to actually let it set for a couple minutes, let it just kind of sit. But I don't want you guys at home to. Uh, to wait too long so let me come over here put my frying pan now a lot of people fry their meatballs some people will put them uh, in a, on a baking sheet and uh, and cook them up when I was in the uh, restaurant we used to cause we made hundreds of meatballs at a time we'd put them on a, on a on a pizza sheet put them in the oven let them let them cook in the oven for a little while uh, at home, you know, use the frying pan. Um, two two sizes worth of meatballs here. Um, sometimes I make little meatballs, little guys, and I'll use those in a wedding soup. Um, that's our, our traditional wedding soup, spinach and little baby meatballs. Um, my mom will also use those little ones in a lasagna. That'll be one of the meats in the middle of her lasagna. Uh, tonight I'm going to make big ones because that's what we're going to use. I don't like to make more than I can use once or twice at a time. I find if you fry a meatball, fry, for, freeze, put a meatball in the freezer, I find strange things happen uh, once you freeze a meatball. They don't like it. So I make a good, little bigger than a little bigger than a golf ball size meatball. You see that? All right, you see the parsley? See everything on there real nice? And I put it in a frying pan. And I'll keep going uh, until we use them up. And tonight we're going to have fresh homemade meatballs with, uh, with uh, what I say, ravioli. Going to do ravioli tonight uh, with nice sauce. And uh, that's, that's uh, Danny Rufo's meatball recipe. Had a good time with you tonight. I hope everybody has a good evening. Uh, I'll see everybody again soon. Remember, I'm on YouTube, Donato Rufo, one word, D-O-N-A-T-O-R-U-F-O. I got all the past episodes sitting in there ready for you to watch. And I still got some new stuff coming. Remember, this is social studies class. Lately, it's been a culture and a, a cooking class. But I still got some social studies lessons. I got a Christopher Columbus coming. Got the history of Delaware. Explain to some of you guys uh, a little bit about my home state. Uh, so I got some things coming. I hope you uh, stay tuned. I hope you enjoy and tell your friends. I'm having a good time talking to people and uh, connecting. And I hope you enjoyed my, I think, simple meatball recipe. Okay? So everybody, listen, have a great night. Take it easy. And I'll see everybody soon, okay? How am I going to turn this off? And now we go off.